Good morning. On behalf of the St. Paul's United Methodist Church, I welcome you to this sacred space as together we celebrate the life and resurrection of Elisha Lovell. St. Paul's United Methodist Church is a compassionate community led and transformed by the Spirit. And because of that, we have been uplifting all of you in prayer for years. As you have journeyed with Alicia, we have been praying for your strength, for your ability to give support, for the comfort that you could offer and the laughter that you would share. Please know that 
today and every day, you are a part of this family of faith and you are always welcome here, whether it is in times of sorrow or in times of celebration. You are welcome here, and the love of God surrounds us and infuses us with all that we need in life and in faith and in life eternal. It is such a privilege to have McCune and Lovell families here in Mass as we worship this day, as this church has been such an important part of their lives. And it is a privilege to welcome back to the worship leadership Reverend Rebecca Dolch, who is a beloved former pastor here and a beloved member of this extended family. And so I will ask Rebecca to lead you through the rest of the service. Well, this is uh, Alicia's service, so we're not standing on too much formal ceremony here today. She would greatly disapprove. <laughs> so one thing that um, we wanted to do is one thing that well, Alicia was about was community and getting all of her beloveds together. So I'm going to ask different categories of people uh, to stand so that we can see you. First of all, if her family, her McCune Lovell Boutron family would stand, and, they, and you can, that, that family can stand and, and keep looking back. Um, wonderful. And now if um, the people of St. Paul's here who are represented here today, if you would stand, I know some of those are part of the Lovell family. Yeah. People who have come from a long ways away, if you would stand. All right. How about her, her, uh, the friends of uh, Jeff and Nancy and, um, and I love that. <laughs> right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. And now, how about Alicia's e uh, close friends? Right, yes. And then, Anyone else? <laughs> so blessings, and um, in the spirit of Alicia, if you'll remain standing for just a moment, Alicia was always about movement. And so uh, we're going to do a very simple uh, yoga-like movement here this morning as we, as we kind of gather together, open up our hearts, and prepare for this service, which will probably be an hour and a half or two hours. Feel free if you need to go and use the restrooms there right out in the back of that hallway. First of all, let us reach for the highest ideal that we possibly can and even stretch ourselves as far as we can. And then from that highest place, that beauty encircles and pours out blessings upon everyone and all created things. And then we bring all of that into our hearts as we worship and celebrate today. Amen. You may be seated. Sister and brother angels, <laughs> a memorial service is a very precious, it's a powerful ritual. It's a ritual of healing in which we lift broken hearts to the divine and ask for the presence of peace and for the tenderness of love. A memorial service is a time to face our own mortality and to commit more deeply to the life that we have been given to live. It is an opportunity to open up to the mystery of eternity that Jesus and all the saints and sages have touched. It is a time to open the door to what Christians call communion with the saints. That is a sense of deep connectedness, soul to soul, spirit to spirit, which cannot be lost in death. 
But most of all, today is a time and a place to gather together to rejoice in the gift of Alicia's presence on earth, all that she meant to and taught us, and to celebrate her incredible life force, her huge orbit of people, her boundless love. Let, her, let us gather hearts, minds, emotions, our unity as family and friends, and let us pray. God of us all, we come to you with hearts full of emotion, immense gratitude, terrible sorrow, a supreme joy for having known her, and a longing for peace and unity that is awakened within us as we gather. We pray for you to be with us in all of your ways, for each of us needs your presence in a different way. We pray especially for her precious Aria and Daniel and Daniel's family, for Alicia's parents, Nancy and Jeff Lovell, who imparted to her the foundations of life, love, service, joy, family. We pray for Jesse and Gretchen, eternally connected by the bond of close sisterhood, and for their loving husbands, Tony and Ian, and for Alicia's precious nieces, Nova, Atlas, and Aster. We pray for the cousins and aunts and uncles and in-laws who held her in the arms of family, and for all the friends gathered here as extended family because Elisha extended her heart to us. And we pray for her yoga students, for all anywhere whose lives were touched by her radiance and love. We thank you for all that Elisha gave us as we take a moment of silence to remember in our hearts the special gifts that she imparted to us personally. Let us be in silence. And now let us join together in the unison prayer that is printed in your program. <clears throat> Open our hearts to her eternal presence, to the possibilities of unconditional love, raw expansiveness, deep groundedness, generosity of spirit, and all the things that made Alicia who she was and evermore shall be. As we move forward, shine your healing sun on our sorrow and transform us into all we are meant to be. Amen. The Lovell family are musicians, and I invite the people who are going to sing with uh, Jeff and Nancy and, the, and play. They're also amazing bluegrass musicians, and one of the songs that they would sing together was uh, Little White Church. So we get to have this wonderful blessing. I mean, their music is fantastic, but we also love the music of all the young children here today. It's so happy. It's so, so perfect that they know how to be in this moment, that even in the midst of confusion and sorrow, they know how to express and be totally in love and in joy.
we got into this too several years ago. I'm not sure just how we did it. Just started singing one day and people started throwing it in and started just doing the tempo. Now, we never rehearse it. And we never do it the same way twice. So what you did is what you paid for. <laughs> She sang it and enjoyed it a lot. But I'd like to just take a minute and talk about the people that are up here and uh, what they mean to me. Of course, we all know the Lovely Girls. Kyle Hansen, Jesse Gretchen. But we also have a fourth Lovely Girl now. And she's up there playing bass.
Not only can these sisters sing, but they also express themselves so beautifully. I'm going to ask their cousins, Kelly and Lauren, uh, to both come up and one will read uh, a piece that Jesse wrote and the other will read a piece from our Gretchen. I don't need that, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Um, good morning, I'm Kelly, uh, one of Alicia's many female cousins. <laughs> um, a few weeks before Alicia left us on this earth, she shared with my mom, Jaden, um, a vision that she had that we are all wild women in a forest, chasing after a huge glowing heart together, not knowing whether the path ahead was going to be easy or difficult, but we were together with love all around. In the days after she shared that vision, uh, her sister Jessie was inspired to write this piece in response. For Elisha and her tribe of wild women, a wild woman knows the depths of her heart and the condition of her spirituality are more important than the size of a house or a bank account. Wild women do not wait to be told how they should feel or react, but respond with intuition and authenticity. A wild woman views the world around her as an adventure teeming with possibilities to grow. A wild woman loves fiercely and without qualm. Wild women are not confined to coloring in the lines. Her life is a canvas to fill with every paint and every texture. There's no instruction manual for being a wild woman. It is something you feel and become when you release expectation and you nuzzle into who you are. Wild women take the time to notice respect and appreciate the small things around them. The smallest petal or warm breeze can ignite joy and wonder. Wild women dance when something brings them happiness. A mimosa, a song, an idea. And wild women create heartstrings that tie her to the relationships that she values. Wild women do not fret about how they're seen, but rather invite curiosity as to how they see the world. A wild woman possesses empathy for human emotion. She understands that true emotion and connection is the only way. She will advocate for herself and those she chooses to love. She knows that true success is measured by the heart of the tribe that chooses to stand beside her. She honors the differences and strengths and weaknesses of those she surrounds herself with and is able to call on supports when needed and give support in equal measure. Alicia. You are a shining example and the inspiration of all aspiring wild women. You're perfect in your imperfections and your strengths, for you know what it means to find true connection. You hold space for people to be who they truly are and discover who they want to be, rather than what is expected or forced upon them. There is just such beauty in crafting a world that you love to be in. You've created a circle of love and nurtured each link with thoughtfulness. You are loved beyond words, and you are wild until the end of time. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm uh, one of the other many <laughs> female cousins. Um, I am reading Gretchen's words today. Uh, that I'm not a huge word person. When I show my love, it's in service or in quality time. So this task of stringing together a few sentences to encompass a lifetime of love, understanding, and joy seems daunting. So I will honor Alicia in the best way I am able, which is by living with my own personal mantra in her honor. When the winds of life test my fortitude, I will stand tall. When the pain and despair comes, as it does when a life is well lived, I will ground into it and blossom. And when the joy follows, I will laugh and dance and embrace it with my loved ones that by my side. I will move through my life with gratitude to be here, here, not there, but here, right now. I will love with no agenda, no milestones required, no conditions. 
Note, this includes myself. I will stand tall, and I will choose myself through it all. I'm Lydia Dolch, Rebecca's daughter, <laughs> and one of Alicia's cabin cousins. And Alicia was also helping start a company with me for people with special needs, an empowerment company online. Um, today, I read now from the New Testament sections from 1 Corinthians 13. Alicia's grandmother, Oma, used to say, it's all about love. It's true. So here we go. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body to be burned, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of wrongs. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, but then we'll see face to face. <laughs> now I know only in part, then I will fully know, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love remain, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to give a chronology of Alicia's life that her family shared with me. Um, also, if, if any parents um, would be more comfortable, there are couches and chairs, and you can open up those sliding doors, and there's a sink and water and a bathroom back there. So, I mean, it's totally wonderful that you're in here, but if you want to go elsewhere, there is a place. Speaking of babies, Elisha was born on April 18, 1979 in Germany 
where her dad was serving in the Air Force. Of course, she started out as a world citizen. Yeah. And after Germany, they moved to Griffiths Air Force Base, where her two sisters, Jessie and Gretchen, were born. And I met her at Trueview, their family cabin in the Adirondacks across the street from ours, when she was just a baby. For high school, uh, the family lived in New Jersey, where even as the brand new kid in town, Elisha landed the role of Liesl in the high school musical, The Sound of Music, and then Nellie, the lead role in South Pacific. Elisha tried almost every sport. She was the catcher in softball, she ran track, she was a cheerleader, a soccer player, a swimmer. Nancy said one day she came home with a sports bag and announced to her mom that she was going to play lacrosse and pulled out the uniform, which was a real um, motivator for lacrosse. It was a cute plaid kilt. And then she got out her mouth guard, and Nancy said, Alicia, what is that for? And she said, very matically fact, uh, matter of factly, oh, so I don't get my teeth knocked out. <laughs> Her dad uh, remembers calling her calling from a party one night in high school where Alicia announced that it was turning into a sleepover. So Jeff asked to speak with one of the parents. So Alicia put a boy on the phone <laughs> to pretend like he was dad. And then Jeff said, uh, let me speak with Alicia one more time. And Jeff spoke with Alicia and, and said, is that really the dad? Knowing that it wasn't. And he said, if it is, you can stay because I trust you. And about an hour later, Alicia showed up at home. And Jeff said, at that moment, I knew that she had, was a woman who had developed true integrity that became a hallmark of her life. After high school, Alicia was accepted into Up With People. It was an international organization of young people who toured singing, dancing, and performing skits about positivity, community, equality, and of course, love. They did shows in high school gyms and auditoriums in the United States and abroad and lodged with local families that she remains connected with uh, to, for her whole life. Next came Ithaca College, where she graduated with a degree in occupational therapy, and where her crew team placed second in the national championships. She would always wear a turquoise bandana when she rode so that her people could spot her on the river. While at Ithaca College, Elisha joined the Latin Dance Club with Katya and Aviva. She loved salsa dancing, and it played a prime role in her life. Yes. After college, she followed a young man to Oregon, and she fell in love with Portland and left the guy behind. And she landed a job as a pediatric occupational therapist, which she absolutely loved. She continued Latin dancing with a passion and began practicing yoga. And then starting about 2003, she would run into this guy named Daniel at salsa dancing clubs in Portland. Uh, Daniel thought she danced really well and, and noticed her many times over the course of five or six years. And then after, she, she always brought up the fact that he would say time and again, I'm sorry, I can't remember how to say your name. Right? But one day in June of 2008, they were both invited to the same party, started talking, talking and talking, and then started dating. He never forgot her name again. Things progressed rather quickly. For example, on their second date, she invited Daniel on a three-day rafting trip to meet her sister Gretchen and some friends. Their third date included passports going to British Columbia, where she shared with Daniel that she had arranged to take three months off from work to tour South America. Remember, this is the third date, and Daniel said, I can go with you. 
So from August to December, December, they were together all the time. And on New Year's Day, she called her parents to announce the engagement. Well, they had barely heard of Daniel. So Nancy hopped on a plane immediately to go out and meet him and also fell in love. They decided that for their honeymoon, they would travel for three months around Colombia with the idea of starting an ecotourism business. So they made up business cards and they promoted their idea all around Colombia at hotels and restaurants and things, realizing that they were gonna need to move there. Daniel said, this is such a Daniel, it was a calculated risk. <laughs> but Alicia said, let's go for it, so Alicia. And they moved there to fulfill their dream of living in a warm, sunny, beautiful place where they could live a sustainable lifestyle, raise children together, work from home, run this tourism business. And then in 2014, Aria was born, the love of their life. And I remember Nancy getting right on that plane again. You've had a lot of plane trips. Alicia expanded their business by becoming a yoga teacher. She knew how much better she felt in her body doing yoga, and then she began to explore and teach the spiritual aspects of yoga. With the advent of Zoom technology, she had students from all over the world. Well, there are millions of other events in Alicia's life, and we'll hear some of them in a few minutes from her friends, but I want to lift up perhaps her greatest gift to, certainly to me and to many of us. Alicia showed us how to live boldly with grace and hope and radical love and acceptance during an incredibly difficult journey with terminal cancer. I've never seen anything like it in my 45 years as a pastor how she invited everyone to be on that journey with her, how she suffered with chemo and surgery and loss of mobility and energy and eyesight and ability to speak clearly. And yet she kept welcoming us into the room and holding our hands and asking for stories and thanking us and blessing us and hugging us and giving us hope and encouraging us how she waited for people to come from all over and refused to die until she had said goodbye to all of her beloveds, and how her family gathered around her just a few nights before she died and sang songs from their childhood, including Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. And so I want to say a few words about this amazing song, and then John's going to play it. We thank John so much. He's um, been a friend and musician in the family for so, so long. And uh, you may not know it, but only four of his fingers work. I mean, only eight of his, of his ten fingers work. <laughs> I, I always say, you can play better with eight fingers than most people can play with 12. Right. But I want to tell the story of this song. It's a story of um, the prophets from the Book of Kings in the Old Testament. And it, the song is an African-American spiritual that references this, bi this Bible story. But here's the thing. On the morning that Elisha died, this was the Bible story in what's called the lectionary, and that is the Bible reading that's read through Christianity all around the world. The Bible story that morning, June 26, was about the two prophets, the prophet Elijah and his apprentice prophet, guess what his name was? Elisha, or also called Elisha, but also Elisha. So prophets in general were people who showed evidence of having a deep connection with the divine and an incredible compassion for all people, a spirit of justice and courage to speak truth. It's a powerful story because it's a story about how Elijah did not go through death but was taken up into heaven by horses and chariots of fire that had swooped down and carried him directly into heaven. 
And in the scripture, horses and chariots of fire are symbols of God's uh, powerful presence. So just before, now and here's where the story, remember this was the morning she died. Churches all over the world were reading this story. The morning she died, uh, the, the story went, Elijah tells Elisha to go on ahead, he'll be fine. But Elisha said to him, I will never leave you. Our Alicia said that only days before she was leaving this earthly plane to one of her friends and probably everybody. I will always be with you to help you. In the Bible story, the prophet Elijah asked the prophet Elisha, what can I do before you before, for you before I die? And here's what the prophet Elisha said. Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. <laughs> a double portion in the uh, ancient world was the inheritance of the oldest child. Because the oldest child also inherited the responsibility of taking care of the family and the tribe. But here's what I think our Alicia would say if, we were, if she were to say to us, I think she would say, as I go, let me give all of you a double portion of my spirit. And that's why we're here today to receive that double portion of her spirit, to celebrate her eternal presence, and to open our hearts to her spiritual essence, that eternal love that, as John White plays, swing low, sweet chariot, um, uh, we'll remember that day, that morning, and that scripture. As he comes to the piano, just want to read some of the words to the song. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Remember that? And it says, I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? A band of angels coming after me, coming for to carry me home. And then this beautiful last verse, if you get there before I do, Coming for to carry me home. Tell my people I'm a coming to. Coming for to carry me home, John. Thank you.
Let the people say amen. 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 So beautiful. Thank you so much. Well, Alicia had beloved friends from different part of her life, and so for the next 30 or 40 minutes, uh, they're going to be telling stories. I invite you all to come forward now. They're going to stand. Did you still want to stand in the, in the center here, or you want to be here? Be up here at the speaker? Okay, great. Oh, that was beautiful. I pictured her just flying on a magic carpet through the sky of a golden chariot with two haughty archangels beside her. Thank you, Gretchen, for the vision she shared with you. Alicia gave us all the gifts of light, love, and beauty, love and connection. She generously connected me with her friends and her family. And this became her circle of angels. This church is a perfect structure to complete that circle. She touched all of our lives with her love. And I want to invite you to share those stories. I'm going to start by sharing Julie Calcara Bryce's story. She's here with us today, but um, she asked us to share what she's written. I've known Elisha since we were in fifth and sixth grade. I will always remember her being spunky, sassy, and a genuinely sweet friend. I think we'll all remember her being <laughs> spunky and sassy <laughs> and a very sweet friend. <laughs> As kids, we were always scheming a plan to spend time together, whether it be at her house, mine, or her cabin. Our time together was spent swimming, boating, skiing, at church events, girls' youth conferences, being silly together, knocking ankles, dancing, and wrestling on the ground. We did that as kids, and we did it in our 20s and our 30s, and the silliness and our caring, lifelong friendship continued into our 40s. Even as kids, when we were together, Elisha's attention was never divided. She was never distracted. She always made me feel like I was the most important thing. She was really good at that. She listened and cared about our conversation and our time together. Into our adulthood, she still made me feel special and that our time together was important and precious. When she was in town, she always made time and came running toward me with outstretched arms. <laughs> and after we both got married, our husbands and kids joined in the time we spent together. Our husbands had no choice but to deal with our silliness and ankle knocking. <laughs> Elisha had a way of making those around her feel loved. I will miss these visits with my friend, but I will remember her beauty and her friendship for the rest of my life. I will always cherish these memories of Elisha. I will always hold them in my heart. I love you, Pookie. <laughs> May God bless you and keep you. Elisha was the oldest of us McCune cousins, and I'm Jamie McCune Leventhal, the oldest among the Dave McCunes. I now realize that through all my life, without knowing it, Elisha was the real-life preview of what I could be in just a few years if I played my cards right, a mentor in life and love. We spent so many summer days and nights on Echo Lake or in tents in each other's backyards or living rooms, sharing the simplest of days and becoming who we are together. She was silly and smart. She was always kind, and she guided us without being bossy. <clears throat> she laughed with her whole soul, and she still does wherever she is now. She was a mover, a shaker, a laugher, and a lover, and I've been so inspired by her endeavors and in awe of the beauty and the life she created. It will remain a reflection of her. 
There were so many times we were brought together by a holiday or an event and her unwavering gift bubbled up again and again, the gift to draw out the authentic selves and truths of those around her. Elisha, you knew all along, with simplicity and authenticity comes great, great joy. Thank you for helping us slow down and see the people we love standing before us, see our lives for their richness, and reminding us to speak gratitude for our many blessings. Love you. I just need to go down stage, okay. Here's a story your mom, my Aunt Jaden, tells. I remember the time when I had all three McCune and all three Lovell kids by myself at the lake house. It was lunchtime, and we were making the infamous cheesy bagels when Ryan, trying to be an independent five-year-old, tried to grab the huge juicy juice can off the counter and dropped it on his little toe. He screamed. There was blood everywhere, and Elisha was cool as a cucumber. We packed all six kids in the car, and Elisha held Ryan all the way to the emergency room. To this day, when I look at Ryan's funky toe, <laughs> that still loses its nail every year or so, <laughs> I think of the calm, beautiful presence that Elisha brought to a moment of chaos. We jump ahead a few years now. It's the summer after graduating from high school. Jen Nash writes, I met Alicia 25 years ago outside Denver, Colorado. We were beginning a year-long international journey with Up With People, a traveling musical and community service-based troupe of over 150 people aged 18 through 28 from over 30 countries. She was 18, I was 24. She grew up in New York, New Jersey. I grew up in Northern Minnesota. She could dance and sing with a full heart that was noticed from the back of the room. I was a stage potato and preferred to be off stage. It was an unlikely friendship, but we connected almost instantly. Alicia was a force in our cast and many of us felt a strong bond to her. Castmates remember her infectious laugh, her beaming smile, her all-encompassing hugs, her compassionate kindness with a slight touch of mystery. One castmate said she had a knack, <laughs> she had a knack for many things, including making everyone feel special when you were in her presence. I particularly remember her hands. They were beautiful and graceful and sparkly with all of her rings. When we said our goodbyes in Lisbon, Portugal, after a year of ups and downs, I remember knowing she was going to do something important with her life. She was definitely going to make her mark on this world. I am Lynette Mendez, and I met uh, Elisha. She, I was Miller, <laughs> Lynette Miller to her. Um, I met her the next fall when we were just leaving the nest. I felt like I had drawn the winning ticket in the freshman roommate lottery. <laughs> I really did. We connected immediately and spent so much of the next two years together. I felt when we met, Elisha, that you were a kindred spirit, physical, beautiful, fun, and always up for adventure. Our time together was focused on being at home in our bodies. I was lonely, and you and Laura and I created a routine of running on the track. And then we discovered the crew team, and you helped me join a community that would become integral to my college experience because we did it together. We found Katya and then Orgoyo Latino, Latin dancing around Ithaca. The three of us became our own team, finding family and comfort with one another. I will always treasure our meals together at the dining hall. <laughs> so much food, dressing up in matching costumes for the dance party of the weekend at the haunt, and waiting tables at the Tower Club at what felt like the top of the world. We shared a grounded connection to ourselves and each other even then. Many, many evenings were spent together trying desperately to be quiet in the library, <laughs> snuggling in a pile of kittens in Katya's single room and exploring Ithaca together. We had moved apart for many years, exploring our own lives after college in various parts of the country and the world. 
I'm so incredibly grateful that we found one another again in these strange and challenging times and that we reconnected when we did. What absolute joy to confirm that we were still so connected in our minds and our bodies, even across the miles that I could feel you and your love through the computer. Practicing yoga with you through the pandemic was one of only a few things that kept me sane and going on. In these last few years, I've learned and confirmed the importance of connection, community, and love of self and others. The gift of your friendship remains, and I will always hold your memory as a blessing in my life. I'm Katya. Um, I'm also an IC classmate of Alicia and Linnitz. I met Alicia the first week of freshman year at Ithaca College. I remember we were at the freshman orientation for our occupational therapy ma majors, and they sat us in a circle in a, on the lawn to do like a meet and greet thing. And I remember spotting Alicia from across the circle. She was wearing a long beachy blue dress with spaghetti straps and some like white fabric, white patterns on the fabric. She had that glowing peachy late summer tan. Um, she had an inviting smile, sparkly eyes, this gorgeous dark brown wavy hair, the kind that I always wanted, and a contagious laugh. And I remember looking at her and thinking, I want to be friends with her. <laughs> We started chatting after the event, and we were basically inseparable from that point on. Her glowy, peachy skin is what in inspired me to give her the nickname Peach, and in return, she called me Katush, which is short for Katusha, or the Russian nickname for Katya. Um, I have so many memories of those college years, late night study sessions with pretzels and easy cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Pretzels and easy cheese, <laughs> um, which is like so horrifying to think now that like we ate that. Um, spontaneous dance parties in our dorm rooms, clothing optional. Um, 80s night every Friday night at the Haunt, where we would dress up in full 80s garb, and we're the only ones <laughs> doing that. Um, checking out cute boys in the library and making up code names for each one of them. Yeah. Alicia and I had a lot of fun, but one of the biggest lessons Alicia taught me was how to be a true friend. Alicia knew how to be an excellent friend. She taught me how to listen deeply and to do sweet things for friends, like write little love notes and leave little surprises for each other. She was the girlfriend guru. She loved her girl friendships, and she taught me how to build loving, lasting girl friendships with other ladies, something that I strive to continue to build in her honor. She taught me how to communicate and to tell the people I love what I appreciate about them. She taught me to be direct and honest and, re and reflect truth back to the people that I love. She taught me how to be friendly with strangers. Gosh, that girl could strike up a conversation with anyone, right? She taught me how to be goofy and not take myself too seriously. She not notoriously never, ever, ever remembered my birthday, and I think that was the same for a lot of us. <laughs> she was horrible at remembering my birthday anyway, but she knew exactly how to make me feel loved, appreciated, heard, validated, valued, understood, and loved. I was so lucky to meet her at the tender age of 18 because those lessons I learned from her about girl friendship and friendship in general have shaped literally every single friendship I have made since that point. That is her legacy that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. Now moving on to a testimony from an Ithaca College crew team member, Carrie Helminger, who couldn't make it here today. Carrie says, I first knew Alicia from rowing on the crew team together at Ithaca College. She trained super hard, but kept things positive and fun, which was a wonderful ba balance for the intensity of many of us. Our friendship really grew, however, towards the end of rowing when we realized we both loved dancing and we loved heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Then she moved to Portland and I moved to Seattle. We would get together two to four times a year when I came down to, came down to town for some training. Those long weekends were always full of dancing, eating good food, and having amazing conversations. Alicia listened intently. She loved and encouraged me. And then we laughed and went dancing. 
I loved those weekends. She was my teacher in how to love myself and my body and to relish all my senses and to make the most of life. I miss her. I agree with Carrie. I know just what she means about how she made you feel. Um, I am Rachel Minel, and I felt that wow um, that we feel when we all met Elisha and throughout our time with her um, shortly before we moved in together in Portland in 2004. We were both new pediatric occupational therapists at our first jobs, and all of the wonders that Portland holds were at our fingertips as single ladies. <laughs> we were enjoying happy hour together one evening, and she gave me a beautiful gift and a sweet card, one of her many love languages. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay I got this. Yeah. Yeah, I deep, deep pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, now I can do this. Yeah, that's what I thought about. Okay. Ah. Exactly. <laughs> okay, I was going through a difficult breakup with a boyfriend at the time. Oh, I need to turn the page. Um, she was wise beyond her years in her advice and wholeheartedness. She gave me a small wooden hand carved fairy with a sediment. Sending you a smooth landing fairy to make the bumps ahead a bit more bearable. There was no other friend that offered herself as fully as Elisha did. Her, love of, her words of love and adoration filled my soul. When we moved in together, the initial click that we felt became permanent. We enjoyed the small and big moments of life. She taught me how to cook real food. So you guys, you gotta understand, before I moved in with Elisha, there were a lot of frozen dinners, <laughs> Marie calendars, and she would open the freezer and she was like, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> so, um, yeah. She introduced me to her love of salsa dancing and invited me to come to yoga classes. Yoga is still one of the best ways that I uh, can ground myself and find my way back to a peaceful state of mind and body. In Portland, we had this huge gold velour, where's Amanda? gold velour couch. Do you remember the gold velour couch? <laughs> In our living room. And if that couch could talk, it would speak of the innumerable long talks and laughter over coffee or martinis about men, life, and planning of Mexico trips in the winter to escape the cold of Portland. Through her own zest of life, she taught me how to have fun and open my heart to possibilities. She taught me how to be present in the moment, like right now whether in a conversation with reflective listening or a walk in the woods. Elisha's wisdom extended into supporting each other in our marriages and then into motherhood. During difficult times, she gave me a different perspective to contemplate. Patience, tenderness, and most of all, humor. In good times, she celebrated and cheered me on. Watching her express her love for Daniel and Aria has shown me how to be a better partner and mother. My love for Elisha is timeless and endless, and our treasured friendship has shaped who I am today more than anyone in my life. I met Elisha that same year, and I remember being introduced to Rachel and going out many times for fun dance nights. So yeah, I'm Amanda Miller, and I live in Maine now, and I've been over to Portland again to visit and meet new friends. Daniel, I remember on one of those early dates, taking us out dancing. I was like, yeah, I really like him. She's like, me too. <laughs> Alicia has always embodied the loving energy of the feminine divine. It teaches us that through giving, we receive, and that honoring the light of another makes us all brighter. Before meeting Alicia while living in Portland, I was shy about connecting with other women. I was afraid of sharing vulnerabilities, but her deep sharing made me feel safe and deserving of hugs and touch and support and adoration. Through her, I learned to love women more deeply as friends and spirit sisters and to receive love in return. 
Alicia showed her love and her focused attention to the stirrings of my heart. She brought out my sensual side, called me her fire goddess, mm -hmm. made me feel so beautiful when she would pick out a fun outfit. I'm a tomboy from Maine, so she would want to do my makeup, and I was like, huh? <laughs> and she'd tie it all together with the perfect earrings. I'm wearing some, she made some fire goddess earrings. Got those going on. And before her passing, just as she was transitioning home in the hospital, I promised her that I will continue to radiate her exuberant energy on the dance floor, in my laughter, in my authentic connections with other women. This is my lifelong mantra. And although her body has returned to Mother Earth, her spirit lives on strongly in me. This weekend, I've been channeling her fun, romantic humor. And she lives strong among the circle of angels. I am Lauren, Alicia's cousin. Hi again. And I was privileged to live in the same city Portland, Oregon, as Elisha during my formative and very feisty early 20s. <laughs> she was not only family to me, but a dear soul sister friend. In Elisha, I saw my own zest for an authentic and passionate life mirrored and magnified. Together, we'd sip wine, almost always red, and nibble chocolate, only dark, on her sunny little side porch on Southeast Ankeny. Shout out to Rachel. We talk about the mysterious unfoldings of our inner journeys, our love lives. I lived vicariously through her epic dating adventures <clears throat> and spiritual wonderings. I loved how deeply she honored and felt the passage of seasons and, used, and how she used ritual that reflected her lived values of gathering together to break bread and have a good time. I will always hold dear a summer solstice that she, Gretchen, and I shared at Laurelhurst Park in Portland where she dressed in all white, gathered us for a poem around an altar as we all soaked up the June sunshine. She and Daniel and Gretchen and I laughed late into the summer evening. We spent many a Spanksgiving a holiday the rest of you may know as Thanksgiving. <clears throat> Feasting, drinking, and breaking into spontaneous dance parties that featured, in the legendary words of Uncle Jeff, so many unspeakable dance moves. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> she celebrated any opportunity to dress up, and these gatherings were no different. Her style was so legendary in my circle of friends. All the sparkles, plunging necklines, animal prints, all the stretch pants. I'm really excited that she got to live in the golden age of athleisure. <laughs> Such a trendsetter. Oh, my sweet cousin, you are so missed by this circle of loved ones. Your fierce and loving heart is a legacy that will always shine on in my own heart. <sighs> Reminding me to always keep my heart open and my curiosity alive, no matter the bumps in the road. I promise to keep dancing, laughing with my whole body, and hold always a reverence for life's transitions. I love you so much. Shine on, beauty. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aviva. I also went to Ithaca College, but I didn't start there. I was a transfer student. Um, but I joined the crew team, and I met Elisha on my first day on the team, and she just wiggled her way right into my heart. <laughs> it's not hard for her to do that. 
And I think it was the following summer we lived together off campus and uh, I graduated a year before her. One of the things I love about Elisha, I think everyone here relates to, which is how she demonstrated her love and her value of our relationship with her. And after I graduated and I moved away, she always made it a priority to visit me wherever I lived in the country. And I would find a way to visit her. And we created a tradition of making sure we always got together for New Year's Eve as long as she was living in the country. And sometimes I'd be in a relationship or she'd be in a relationship or she'd be in one and I'd be single and she'd want to get together for New Year's Eve and I would say, are you sure you don't want to be with your boyfriend? And all the time she would go, Psh. <laughs> boys come and go. <laughs> Sister friends are forever. <laughs> And they weren't just words. She showed me with her actions that her closest friends were truly a top priority for her. And she would make, she would hand make cards and little presents that she would mail or she would give to me when we got together. And these items embodied all of the love and gratitude that she had for our friendship. And this little bit, it just doesn't encompass all of the regular lengthy phone calls between our visits, all of the memories of the adventures we had, sharing everything with each other, our deepest secrets, and just laughing for hours on end. She was the kind of friend that no matter what it was, everything was more fabulous with her. She was my schlooks, and I was her schlooks. <laughs> Here's a tribute from Joanna Maricelli. She says, I did not know Elisha as long as many of the angels did, but she touched me very deeply in our short time together. We met in Colombia, two New York girls who luckily found their way to each other. I had an instant connection with her. She just made me feel so good. The old saying is true. It's how people make you feel. Those are the ones you'll remember the most. We shared many things together and visited parts of Colombia, Ecuador, and France. How lucky we were. Cooking together in her kitchen in Colombia or in mine here in France are some of my favorite memories. But even more were our walks with Nani and just talking about everything and nothing. After our walk, Cafe del Mundo would come on playing the best songs and we'd open wine and make some aperitif foods. The cooking would commence like this with laughs, smiles, sharing, and booty shaking thrown in for good measure. The candles would be lit, illuminating the flowers and plants outside in a warm glow. The smell of jasmine always in the air. All of us gathered round the table holding hands, ready to give thanks for the food and the love we shared. A sweet prayer song before we all dug in, laughing and talking into the night, followed by games of rummy cue. Those are the moments forever etched into my heart. But most of all, it was Elisha. She appreciated everything in life. I loved how excited she became when we were talking about food and she was learning something new, the fire in those eyes. What touched me most was her intuition, her ability to see right into you. One time when we were cooking together, she stopped me from showing her something and looked at me with squinted eyes, cocked head, and said, this is your thing, isn't it? And I was confused and asked her, what do you mean by that, this dish? And she said, no, cooking, it's your thing. This is how you bring joy to the people you love. I teared up and we hugged. She touched my heart so deeply then and so many times after. She always understood people at a profound level. I hold tight to my memories of Elisha and think of ways to honor her, mostly just by trying to love myself better and share that love with others. I think this is the best way I can honor her, but I also think of her when I practice yoga or eat some of the foods we loved making together. And I'm gonna read some words from Andrea Gonzalez, a Colombian friend. I saw Elisha long before we actually met. She was one of those rare people who could fill a room with her presence. It was impossible not to notice her. Not only was she possibly the most beautiful woman you could meet up close, but she also radiated a magnetic energy. Unconsciously, I wanted to be her friend. It was a Zumba class in Manizales, Colombia in 2018. 
She was in the front row, busting out her moves. Unintentionally, I began to follow her and not the instructor. She was just so good at it. Little did I know that she would become one of my most beloved friends and I would be deeply blessed to know her. I remember this memory with gratitude and warmth. Several months later, my sister recommended an awesome yoga instructor from the US. Who would believe that that instructor was Elisha? This was where our friendship bond began, shortly after I fell in love with yoga and with this amazing woman. During the next four years, Elisha became not only my yoga instructor, but most importantly, my friend. I'm about 10 years younger than her, yet our connection was rooted by yoga, our love of nature and our young girls, and her friendship with my sister. I mostly got to know the yoga-centered, spiritual, and nature lover side of Elisha. Our moments together involved sunset yoga, musical therapy sessions, and nature hikes, Thai massage sessions at her house, and spending time together at her lodge in Via Maria. One of the most soul-nurturing moments we shared was when we planted mandalas at her and Daniel, planted tree mandalas at her and Daniel's lodge. I believe her spirit lives and grows tall today in those trees that she so carefully arranged and planted that day on her Colombian land that she loves so much. With my sister, we once treated ourselves to some carefree time to relax, talk, and be heard, just the three of us. We called it our lady time. And this is a poem in honor of that moment together. I'm so honored to read lady time. I think all of the ladies here and far can relate to this poem. The Colombian mountain landscape spans the horizon. Three sisters of the heart gathered by the pool. A table with oatmeal pancakes, homemade peanut butter, strawberries, bananas, and sparkling water. Food for the body and soul wrapped up in friendship, feeling loved, feeling heard, so present and carefree, sharing our thoughts and stories, giving and receiving. This is our time, our lady time. I see you humbled by your goddess-like presence, inspired by your childlike wonder, grateful for your friendship. This loving memory will be with me forever. Jen Nash from Up With People continues. 20 years later, I joined her yoga retreat in Cozumel, Mexico. What a gift to spend six days in paradise, reconnecting, reminiscing, laughing, and nourishing our bodies together through delicious food and drink. Those hands I had admired were used to heal me through yoga, and her teaching felt like she knew exactly what I needed to hear and how my body needed to move. I loved every second together. That healing continued through her online yoga classes during the pandemic. Those classes were much more than an opportunity to move my body. They were a connection to not only her and what she was experiencing during this awful illness, but also introduced me to many of her wild women angels tribe, and most importantly, connected me back to myself. I selfishly hoped I could hold <laughs> those loving, healing hands just one last time in this world before she passed, but it was not meant to be. Instead, I hold on to her teaching and healing. I am forever grateful for the abundant gifts that she continues to give me. She definitely made her mark on this world just as I knew she would. How lucky we all are to have known her. Alicia was wise beyond her 18 years when she traveled and up with people. She gave us words to live by that year when she said, put your heart and soul into everything you do in life. It was obvious she lived her life that way, and I encourage all of us to honor her memory by doing the same. I'm Jaden, Alicia's aunt, 
And while we've heard so much about her generosity of spirit with her sister friends and other loved ones, Alicia also knew how to advocate for herself big time. And in those weeks when she was um, feeling so depleted, she said to Daniel one day, I am not using that Cape Farm stuff anymore. I'm not taking that supplement. And lo and behold, she consulted with Phyllis Joyce and came up with what we called soulful soup that had 27 ingredients. And Alicia and I um, spent the day, and then many days after that, um, making soulful soup. And somehow I was writing a lot during that time, and, and this um, came to me. And I think at first I called it Alicia's Recipe for Life, but the subtitle would be What I Learned from Alicia. Savor the beauty of each day, like a gourmet meal prepared just for you. Each bite created with love in mind, each ingredient carefully chosen and added at its own appointed hour. The pantry is always full, even when you fear there may not be enough, for sometimes the simplest, simplest meal, prepared with intention and love, is the medicine that you need. When you are tired and uninspired, turn to the soulful chefs that are by your side, all of these people. For when you are weary and in need of nourishment, they will always be there. Choose your band of curious souls wisely. Generously share your recipes for a life well lived and ask them to share theirs. For together, you will stir up a soulful soup that will feed no less than everyone you touch. I'm stirring the soup. <laughs> <laughs> A yoga teacher friend of mine that taught get real yoga would show up as she is, as she was in that moment. And there's this wise knowledge about how we heal ourselves. And there's this nectar of the, our highest self that pulls up in our mouths at the end of a practice. And we, at the end of a practice, would savor it and swallow it. And it's Amrit, the nectar of our highest self. So to honor Alicia's spirit, I invite us all to reflect on the beauty, light, love, and connection in this room, here and now, and feel her essence resonating with our own healing light. As we move through our lives, may we feel close to her as we sensually enjoy every sip of life's nectar. A toast to your highest self. We're coming close to the end of the service, and um, I'm going to invite everyone to stand, if you still can. 
And in honor of Alicia, who was so grounded to the earth and uh, the vision that she and Daniel had about ecotourism, I want to invite us to participate in a prayer to the four directions. And we'll start with the east, which will be right over there. And as I say, um, we thank you as then you'll, after I say, we thank you as you say together, we remember Elisha. All right, and you can say it as strongly as you would like. Creator God of us all, we thank you for the breath and life within us, for all of your creation. Hear and honor our prayers this day as we grieve our great loss and celebrate the glorious life of Elisha Marie Lovell. Let us face east. Great and wondrous spirit, we see you in the east, the place of the rising sun, the element of fire, the birth of new things, the light of the soul. We thank you for lighting that fire within Alicia, the fire of passion, compassion, creativity, her fiery zeal for life and connection, for health and well-being. We thank you as we remember Alicia. Let us turn now to the south, which would be this way, this, toward the sky here. And to the warm earth element. You made Alicia a grounded yogi, alive and comfortable in her earth body. You birthed her into her spirit name, Love All and filled her with compassion for inhabitants of the earth, the people, the four-legged ones, the winged ones, the crawling ones, the plants, and all creation upon Mother Earth. Warm our hearts with the eternal, grounded love that was and is and evermore shall be Elisha. We thank you as we remember Elisha. Let us face west and invite the water element, cleansing waters, healing waters, flowing waters, the water in our blood and birth. Bring healing to the people Alicia loved. Restore in us balance and flow so we too are able to know our place on this earth in life and in death. Heal us in body, mind, and spirit, and bring the fullness of joy to us, as Alicia did for all of us. We thank you as we remember Alicia. And now let us turn to the north, to the air element, the realm of the great return to spirit, the direction of the ancestors and the wisdom of the elders, alive and deceased. We look to the north for inner healing and insight from those who have walked up before us, especially Alicia and her wisdom. And as each day passes, help us to surrender with grace the things that do not serve us. And when time for our change of worlds has come, let us go as Alicia showed us with grace and peace. We thank you as we remember Alicia. And now let us all turn and face the center to the center aisle. The center, Mother Earth, we thank you for your luscious beauty, for all you have given, especially the earth body, the beautiful earth body of our beloved Elisha who rests within you. Remind us never to take more from you than we need and remind us always to give back more than we take. We thank you as we remember Elisha. And now for the final one, I invite everyone to place your hands on your own heart center and let us turn within to the element of intuition and spirit. You guided Elisha's steps you gave her courage to dance through the cycle of life with honesty, expansiveness, soulfulness, unbridled joy, to dance 
with the wild women and wild men of her life. And so we pray now in the wisdom of Jesus Christ, of the Buddha, of all the masters, saints and sages, prophets and yogis, we pray, O oh, Holy Spirit, come forth. Receive Alicia into the blessedness of everlasting peace, into the glorious company of the saints of light. Lift up our hearts as we lift her up to you and carry her home in your tender, loving arms. Amen. Amen. And let us uh, continue as we sing our closing hymn, number 572 in the, I believe this is the blue hymnal, number 572, it's called Pass It On. Sing that together. to each and every one of you who came to join us all today. Elisha posted this poem called Epitaph by Merritt Malloy on her Facebook page soon after she'd received her diagnosis. 
So we take it that this is a message that she wanted for us all to hear. So I share with you Epitaph by Merritt Malloy. When I die, give what's left of me away to children and old men that wait to die. And if you cry, if you need to cry, cry for your brother or sister walking the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give me. I want to leave you something, something better than words or sounds. Look for me in the people I've known or loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live in your eyes and not on your mind. You can love me most by letting hands touch hands, bodies touch bodies, and by letting go of children that need to be free. Love, love doesn't, doesn't die. die. People, People do. do. So, when all, all that's, that's left, left of me is love, love give, give me, me away. away. <laughs> and let the people say, Amen. Amen. Daniel is going to... Pardon? Okay. I just want to thank all of you so, so much for being here. And I wasn't going to say anything, but I, I feel like I'm compelled to talk to you all right now. Um, all of you made a very, very difficult situation so much better, so much lighter, so much more bearable. And I am eternally grateful for all of you. And so I want to let you know that there is boundless love from me to each one of you, and I am here to continue spreading Alicia's message of love, of compassion, and of everything that she embodied. And uh, I want to play a song that I took for, I, we talked about doing this a week ago, two weeks ago. And I couldn't figure out a song for her <laughs> to play today when we're leaving. And, I, and we wanted to make it a salsa song. And it did not come to me. So this morning, Rebecca called me and she said, do you have a song? And I said, you know what? I don't. It's been really hard. <laughs> it's been really hard to figure out a song. So I said, you know, I'm going to go get her phone, which I have here in my pocket. And I'm going to find out what she had in her music. And she had a song that I had never heard before that I'm gonna play for you now. I hope it will work <laughs> here because we, it was such a last minute thing that it didn't work, but um, it's a salsa song and it's called Beautiful Things. And I hope you like it. Thank you for coming here and being here with us all. And uh, after this, we're gonna party hard <laughs> because we wanna celebrate Elisha. We are sad because we miss her, we are sad because she is no longer with us in form, earthly form, but she's with us every day in our hearts and our spirit. And please celebrate her life in your own life. So I'll play this for you now. And I just wanna give you all a huge hug of gratitude for everything that everyone has done. Um, always, but more so even in these very difficult times. So thank you so much. And feel free to greet each other and dance during the song. This is our post-loop. Sounds good? Tú llegas 
Se cuela en nuestro 